Alright, this video is going to be about Proverbs 9, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the chapter, and then I'm going to talk about each verse individually. It says, Wisdom hath builded her house, she hath hewn out her seven pillars, she hath killed her beasts, she hath mingled her wine, she hath also furnished her table, she hath sent forth her maidens, she crieth upon the highest places of the city, whoso is simple, let him turn in hither, as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. But by me, or I'm sorry, for by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself, but if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. A foolish woman is clamorous, she is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house, on a seat at the high places of the city, to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. So what we have here is a contrast between a foolish woman and wisdom. Okay. We have foolishness and wisdom being represented in female aspects. Now up here it says, Wisdom hath built her house, she hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts, she hath mingled her wine, she hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens, she crieth upon the high, highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither, as for him that wanteth understanding. She saith to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. So, wisdom is obviously a good thing. It's the thing that characterized the author of the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, King Solomon, and it's something that is a gift from God. And it's being equated. Um, wisdom herself is saying, come and drink of the wine which I have mingled. If, if mingling wine is some sort of uh, evil thing that only bad people did. Why is wisdom saying to come in and... It's comparing gaining information and gaining knowledge with partaking in alcoholic drinking? Why? Because drinking alcohol is not a sin. Drunkenness is a sin. But that's a side note, and I don't want to get off on that tangent. In verse 6 it says, forsake the foolish and live. So it's saying forsake the foolish in terms of not just foolish actions, but foolish people. Forsake them. Don't have any dealings with them. Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. So it transitions in verse 6 by saying forsake the foolish, I believe that this is not only talking about the foolish like actions that a fool would do, um, but it is talking about people that do these things in terms of a noun. Uh, and then it goes right into talking about a scorner. He that reproveth the scorner getteth to himself shame. And that how how true is that really? How how very true that is. And it says in one of the most famous uh, passages in the book of Proverbs, one of the most uh, commonly uh, quoted ones, it says, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Now, a lot of people that actually know this verse and could quote this verse off the top of their head are actually guilty of doing what this verse is saying to not do, which is kind of sad. It's just shameful. Uh, Reprove not a scorner. What is a scorner? It's somebody that, uh, well, defies Proverbs 18.13 and answers matters before they hear them. It's somebody who just does not want to hear any sort of correction whatsoever. And that's obviously defined in the context of this passage. It says, don't correct them. 
and reprove is a smaller and more gentle correction than, the, than rebuking somebody. And it says, don't even, don't even try to gently correct somebody who is a scorner. Because that person is going to hate you. But if you rebuke, if you harshly correct a wise man, and he will love thee. Why? Because it says, give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. So that's why when you can harshly correct somebody, if what you're doing is right and I mean right, then that wise man is going to accept what you're doing as truth. It says, give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. So I don't want to get too ahead here. I want to go back to verse 8, um, where it says, the rebuking. So this doesn't mean going around just rebuking everybody and just railing on everybody. You need to be correct, and they need to be in a serious fault. It's not okay to just go around rebuking everybody because you think that you're right. But if there are serious matters, and yes, I myself am guilty of this, if there are serious matters, like when it comes to twisting Bible scripture, or blatant hypocrisy, or serious heresy, like heresy that attacks the gospel or certain elements of God's character that are not uh, true characteristics of God that make him out to be a less holy, less loving God, anything less than who he is, then yes, that those are things that I personally attack. Um, but I don't want to get off on that or anything personal about me. So um, rebuking a wise man is something that a wise man is always going to enjoy. And notice in verse 9, there's a contrast here. Um, it says, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. And a lot of people, a lot of people that love the book of Proverbs, are, they they love knowledge. And I, I love knowledge too. Um, but, they, but they fail to see this entire verse. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. So they think, yeah, okay, being able to handle correction a little bit, yeah. But it says, teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. So there's two, there's two elements here. It's one thing to be... Um, so you have to be able to accept instruction to increase in learning. So it's not just giving yourself information to increase your knowledge. You also have to be a just man. A just man is somebody who obeys God, that has a heart that wants to obey God and wants to do right. Now, you may fall. But you need to, that has to be the case. You need to be a just man. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. And then look at verse 10. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Teach a just man. A just man is going to fear God. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. If you understand the Bible... That is understanding. There is no greater understanding than truly understanding God's character and then doing it. That's the thing. If you truly, truly understand God's character and you do it, then you're going to know more of God's character, which is going to in turn increase. It's just going to keep increasing each other. The more knowledge and the more obedience is going to cause more knowledge, and the more knowledge you get, it's going to cause more obedience, and that has to be a fight that takes place because once you're tried, you're going to come out as precious metals. That's what the Bible says. And in verse 11 it says, For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. Um, I'm not going to really pretend to know what um, these are saying. It says, For by me thy day shall be multiplied. I know what these, this means. It says, For by me thy day shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. That's found throughout the Old Testament. That's found throughout the entire Bible. If you obey God, God will increase your happiness and your life on earth. Now, you're going to go through some tribulations. I mean, read the book of Job. It, just because someone's going through tribulation does not mean that they've sinned. But it says, you obey God, your, your life will be increased. So that's self-explanatory. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. Now, if you increase your knowledge, that's not really going to help anybody else unless you're teaching somebody. So um, I guess I do understand a little bit of what this means. It says, if thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. 
Um, but if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. So if you're scorning and you're not, you don't want to hear what anyone else has to say. I don't really care what you have to say. I don't really, I'm just going to stick to what I believe. I don't really want to hear your input. I'm fine retaining my own ignorance. And that person alone will bear it. A foolish one. And then it goes right into talking about women. I'm not going to bash women. But I think that women are more susceptible to the sin of not handling correction well. Of not being able to be told, well, all right. Um, I'm not even going to give an example. I'm not even going to give an example. Because I don't, I'm not, I can't even think of an example. Um, but anyway, a foolish woman is clamorous. When I think of clamor, I think of like two pots banging together. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him. So this is contrasting up here where it's talking about wisdom doing that and talking and saying, come in hither. It says, stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. So that's what a clamorous woman is saying. But he knoweth not, the passenger, that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depths of hell. So... This woman is bringing people in, killing them, and then they're in hell. So that's all I got. Um, accept correction when it comes from the Bible, and only when it comes from the Bible. God, Let God be true and every man a liar. And uh, God bless.